Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here back with another video and today I'm going to go over some tips and tricks to show you guys how to maintain your bike after you get caught in a rainstorm. So let me paint a picture for you guys. Uh, you just drop off your bike at the bike store. They have it for about, uh, a day to three days. They do a whole major tune-up. They take apart your whole bike. They clean it up. They grease it. They relube everything. You take it out on your first ride and you get caught in torrential downpour and you're like, damn, I don't want to drop my bike back off. I don't want it to be down for another couple of days. I just want to go ahead and ride again and uh, relive myself. So I'm gonna, today I'm gonna show you guys what you guys will need or what I do as a mechanic to kind of go ahead and prolong that situation. So as you guys can see, the weather's been kind of crappy over here in South Florida. Um, it's been raining the past couple of days. I rode uh, two days in a row and I, I, I got caught in some rain and also got caught in some big puddles. We can see here we have a bunch of sand over here. And I recently myself just took my bike apart and just cleaned it obviously because I work in a bike shop, I have some downtime. But I'm gonna show you guys what I do so uh, if I'm just feeling lazy or if I just you know, don't have the luxury of being able to clean out my bike store, like a consumer like you guys, show you guys what I do to go ahead and prolong my derailleur, uh, the cassette, the chain, uh, what I spray on these bolts to make sure they don't corrode. Because what can happen is that if you leave this stuff unattended and it gets caught in a massive rainstorm or even puddles, big puddles and stuff like that, um, this stuff can dry out. It can eat great. Uh, it can eat away your lube. It can cause it to uh, wear down quicker. So an unlooped chain, unlooped cassette, they'll wear down faster. It'll be very noisy. It won't be as efficient either. You'll be working harder. And also I'm gonna show you guys where to spray or what to spray on your derailleurs as well and kind of take care of some normal stuff like your bolts and everything like that. I'm not gonna go over your bottom brackets, your hubs, uh, the, the headset bearings. In hindsight, all that stuff should be kind of sealed. Obviously we know the stuff does wear out and water does seep in there. But this is just kind of like a quick tip to get you guys ready for the next ride if you guys don't want to drop it off the bike shop. So let me get a stand. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so first off, what you're going to want to need is something like this. Now, Muck Off is not sponsoring this video. They do not have any affiliation with me. I just work in a bike shop, and this is why I feel it works best for my occasion. This is called Muck Off MO94 Multi-Use Spray. We used to, a long time ago, use GT85. Something similar to this. It's an aerosol spray that's kind of like a, a uh, rust present uh, preventative and also like a lubricant. So basically what this is, just let you guys know, it says right here, disperses moisture, prevents rust and corrosion, provides light lubrication for moving parts. Dude, don't make fun of my reading. Reduces metal to metal contact, cuts down friction to improve comp <laughs> component efficiency, <laughs> compound efficiency. So basically this stuff works really, really well to stop corrosion. And here in South Florida, like I said, we ride right by the beach. There's a lot of salt in the air. This stuff works great. You're gonna want a little straw right here too to get a little bit more of an accurate spray. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I do. In this video, like I said, I'm not gonna go over the bottom bracket. I'm not gonna, you guys, if you wanted to, you could take it a step further, spray this thing down with a hose real quick, uh, get all the dirt off there. But let's just say in this case, I'm very lazy and uh, I'm kind of ticked off. I just got this thing clean. So let me get you guys down beneath there and I'll show you guys where I spray this. Again, this stuff works really, really good. This is like WD-40, but for bikes, uh, I keep this stuff in my house for uh, key locks, door hinges. This stuff works really, really well, and I'll show you guys exactly how I use it. All right, so we're going to start our way off from the back of the bike and work our way forward. So I'm at the back of the rear derailleur. I'm going to have myself a cloth as well. What we're going to do with this, we're going to catch the overspray with this aerosol spray, okay? So what I'll do is I'll look for all the pivot points on this derailleur. Boom, 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 boom. And what can happen is if you don't attend to these and you don't take care of these overall, Yes, you're obviously shifting up and down, but the more you don't have any kind of lubricant on these contact points or this stuff moving up and down, it wears over time and it'll start to kind of freeze up. Especially down here in South Florida, I've seen it all way too much. So what I'll do is I'll take my rag like this, go behind the derailleur, spray right at this contact point here, right here. And we can, you know, it, it, this stuff will not hurt anything on here. You can literally soak this whole derailleur inside here, kind of work it there. I'll even hit some of the, uh, the limit screws in the back. You have your high and low limit screw. You have your B denture bolt right here as well. And I'll hit those because those bolt heads over time as well, um, if it's not like a high end titanium bolt, that stuff can corrode as well. And then I'll take this stuff and kind of wipe it in. Now, before I get done with the whole video, what I'll do is after I work this in, usually if I'm in my bike stand, I'll work it through the gears so that way the lube will get in there. But what I'll usually do is I'll leave that kind of stuff soaking on there and then I'll shift it up and down the cassette from, 12, from the all the 12 speeds, from the 11 tooth all the way up to the 30 tooth, back and forth to kind of get that lubricant to work in there. Um, and again, this is just go ahead and prolonging these joints right here. You can spray everything back here. You even have your little spring back here. I would recommend if you want, you can spray that with that. It will kind of prolong it, but whenever you get a chance, 
when you take into a shop, just have them re-grease it. Get a little bit of a fine grease and uh, run along that spring back there. But like I said, this is a good rust pre preventative. So we're gonna hit this. Um, your wheels right here, depending on what you have, you have stock pulley wheels. If you have ceramic speed OSPW wheels or these are Nova to ride OSPW wheels, ceramic speed does offer a little tube of pulley wheel loop that you can actually insert into here. Uh, these ones I believe are coated ball bearings, so I don't really need to do anything. Um, unless I want to take the preventative course to do it. Again, these should be packed with grease, but what I'll do on mine every once in a while, especially the dry, I'll hit the bolt heads with them. And I'll go around the back and I'll hit the bolt head with that as well, just to make sure that we are uh, good. So that way, if I did ever want to service this and take this apart, these bolt heads will go ahead and loosen up later on down the road. Okay, so now let's move our way to the front derailleur. All right, so now that we're at the front derailleur, we can see here, we have some pivot points as well. So we have a pivot point here, a pivot point here, a pivot point here on the opposite side, and another pivot point here as well. We also have up here, and then we have some springs in the back right there as well, you can see. What you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and tap all the. So we're gonna hit that right here. Again, just small little sprays. That was a big spray, but something like that. And we wanna work this in as much as we can. This will not affect your DI2 if you have it. You don't have to worry about if you have electronic gearing. All that stuff is pretty much um, water resistant. So you guys are good to go. And again, you can take a little rag like this, clean it. And then what I'll do is while riding around the neighborhood, I'll shift up and down like so. Kind of work it on in there to get that lubricant going. Because especially your front driller, Again, I'll use my situation because we're in South Florida. A lot of people don't engage in the front derailleur. I'll see this happen so many times where people rarely will move their front derailleur up or down because it's so flat here that this literally gets stuck in the same position and then they have to end up replacing it or they're saying, hey, I'm going to do a, a trip with the guys and my front derailleur's not working and then we have to outsource some front derailleur. There's no coming back once I think it's frozen. Um, there's a lot of hard working put into it, but usually when this happens, we have to replace the whole thing. And especially if you have electronic, you want to stay on top of this. So go ahead and spray your pivot points here and here. Now, this one is a little bit extra credit. And especially because I have the power meter pedals, I don't want to tell people to do too much. But a lot of times what I'll see is on Shimano pedals or look pedals, these springs that actuate your cleats to clip in and out. Now, these are these are practically, I only got about 1,500 to 1,800 kilometers on these things right now. So they're pretty fairly new as well. Um, but I will, over the time, especially when I get caught in the rain or something like that, I will take my rag hit right here and kind of spray these things so that way they just stay nice and fresh. Spray them right there. I'll spray the tension right here and just to keep everything where they should be at. I don't even really hit the spray contact point. If you want, you can spray some lube on the rag and rub it on here. But just remember to go back over with some alcohol so that we don't have a slippery surface right there. But the pedals as well, I've seen them if they're not being used as much or clipping in and out. Let's say you ride in the rain and then you forget about it for a couple months. Uh, that is something that rusts pretty quickly on a cheaper pedal for sure. So that's just a little extra if you wanted to. It's not needed on the Keo blades uh, because they use a carbon fiber blade to get you in there. But the springs are there. That's always one that I always hit. Now, bottom bracket, like I mentioned, that is sealed. That is grease. We don't want to touch that. Headset, that is, that is supposed, they always say they're sealed. They're grease. We have enough grease in there. We don't want to worry about that stuff. If you get caught in a lot of rainstorms or you start to feel get notchy, that's when you want to take it apart, replace bearings, uh, stay on top of those things, grease that stuff up. But uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the uh, bolts on the bike. I'll show you guys where to touch those at. So this part of your bike can get really nasty because of the fact that when you're riding, your head is basically over the stem. That's where a lot of sweat drips off of people and goes right onto this area, the headset, the front end of the bike, uh, the stem bolts themselves. This case, I have an S-Works stem and it comes with titanium bolts, so I don't really have to worry about this as much. But on my older bikes, I didn't have titanium bolts. I had basically had just basic, basic uh, hardware on there. After a while, I would start to see sweat or salt water corrode on top of here. They cause the, uh, the paint to come off. They cause whatever kind of finish on the bolt to start rusting or whatever. And especially because when you put a tool on here, it'll start to scratch away that surface. So what I can go ahead and do, just show you guys for example, I'll take like this. I'll grab my, my cloth. I'll literally spray the bolt heads themselves. And this will definitely prolong any kind of rust on here as well. You can hit the side bolt heads as well. And I'll just wipe that around there. And like I said, afterwards, I'll go by it with a piece of um, uh, isopropyl alcohol. I'll go to this top end of the bar 
and I'll go ahead and wipe off that excess of that lubrication. This is not a thick, thick lube. It literally feels like it's almost drying up as is. But again, this is just preventative tactics. You can also go as far as much as, if you want to be really precise, spray on your rag around these. These bolts are very crucial. Spray on a rag around these uh, seat binder bolts and hit these with just a little bit of lube. Because what will happen again, those things will start to get very soft and very corroded and it'll just look really nasty. But Specialized does a good job of giving you a little rubber cap on there. Now, for the biggest part, we're gonna go to the drivetrain to show you guys how to stay above this. So let me show you. So you just got the bike back from the shop. Everything was done on it, but now you just rode through two rainstorms and now you start to hear your bike sound very dry and sound like a bird, uh, bird cage chirping away. What you're gonna wanna do for this one, I have a pretty good lube on here, but I'll show you guys what I do. And you guys can uh, call what you want, but this stuff always works for me. I'll take my rag, I'll take my MO94, I'll spray a really good amount inside the middle of the rag like this. Then what I'll do is I'll put my chain into about the middle of the cassette, just so I can have a better chain line, because what I'm gonna be doing with this, I'm gonna be taking my cloth like so with the uh, MO94 in here, I'm going to grab the chain like so, I'm going to be working it around just to kind of give it a coat and kind of take off that excess water or whatever kind of um, debris that got on that side of the chain. So I'll take it like this. I'll be working it back and forth like that. Don't be scared to get on in there. And this is not a degreaser. This is just a little fine lube to go ahead and take off whatever kind of moisture is on there. And we want to get off that grit as well. And then once we're done so, so now we can see a good amount came off. We look at the chain. It looks almost brand new out of the box. As we see right there. Then we'll take our lube of choice and drip it onto the bottom, which I'll get right now. Today, my lube of choice will be using a Muck Off Dry Lube. Again, I'm not sponsored by those guys. And I'll just take it and I'll lightly coat it. Again, this is very an awkward position right now to show you guys, but you guys get the point. You guys wouldn't believe I'm a bike mechanic, but basically put on the chain like so. And then what I'll do is I'll even shift it up and down after I made the one four rotation, going up and down the cassette to make sure I get on all the, the chain links. And then we'll take it uh, a, a cloth like so and wipe off the excess of whatever excess lube there is. So that way your lube is not splattering around and like that. And then while you're down here, if you want, you can take your other side of the rag just wipe off your chain line. And now you're pretty close to good to go. This is, like I said, this is the technique I use whenever I just get lazy or if, like I said, for you guys at the, as, a, as a consumer, this will uh, prolong you going back to the shop. This will make sure that your drivetrain stays very efficient and you don't have to worry about it wearing out. I've seen a lot of you guys coming after a rainstorm and it sounds like literally you don't have any lube at all. Some of you guys use a very fine lube, like a ceramic lube that's like a race day lube that comes off within seconds of getting rained on. So make sure you're doing these precautionary steps to go ahead and make your chain life last very long. And also your bike bolts you wanna make it last very long as well. It's one of the biggest things I can recommend. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Now I have my bike like new. It's where I want it to be. The bolts are good to go. I'm ready to go back out in the rain. Thank you guys again so much for watching and hopefully you guys enjoy. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Leave a like on the video if you liked it. Leave a thumbs down if you hated it, and uh, I'll see you guys next video. Bye.